In the last video on the 10 watt amplifier, uh, and I'll provide a link to that below, um, as I raised the input uh, signal, there was significant distortion on the output. And I got a few comments on that. I thought what I'd do is uh, do a, a few quick follow-up measurements, uh, uh, graphing uh, input power versus output power, and just sort of see what the line linearity looks like. So what I've, what I've got up on the screen here uh, is uh, basically two graphs that show uh, kind of how the peak-to-peak uh, -peak input voltage, uh, how the peak-to-peak -peak output voltage on the amplifier varies depending on the peak-to-peak -peak input voltage. And there's two lines on the graph here. The blue line is when the power supply is set to 13 volts, and the uh, orange line is when the power supply is set to 20 volts. So that you can see for lower voltages, we've got a fairly line linear relationship uh, between the peak-to-peak -peak input voltage and the peak-to-peak -peak output voltage. But as I raise the peak-to-peak -peak input voltage, you can see it diverges from that linearity. So it, with a 13 volt supply, it starts to diverge around about, say, two and a half, roughly about two and a half volts peak-to-peak uh, -peak input voltage. And then for the 20 volt supply, it diverges a little bit later on, around about four and a half volts peak-to-peak. -peak. But even this doesn't show the uh, whole picture. And let me move over to the oscilloscope and uh, we'll see why that's the case. Okay, so a quick explanation of the setup here. So what I've got is the amplifier uh, connected up to the oscilloscope here. I'm going to start at uh, 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal on the import at 7 megahertz. And then I'm going to vary that up to 5 volts peak-to-peak -peak on the input and we'll be able to see the difference in the, uh, in the output. So there's 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak, and as you can see it looks like uh, quite a nice uh, sine wave. But as I increase it, 2 volts peak to peak, you can see that we're just starting to distort the signal. That's now 3 volts peak to peak, 4 volts peak to peak, and you can see it's turning very rapidly into a square wave. And then finally, at uh, 5 volts peak to peak, we've got that square wave there. So what I thought I'd do is uh, basically uh, enhance the amplifier by putting a low-pass filter uh, after the uh, amplifier and see what the effect of that is at uh, varying uh, input voltages and various supply voltages. So to design the low pass filter, some of you have probably seen this site that I've been to before, rf-tools.com slash LC filter, and I'll include a, uh, a link to this below. But uh, so basically this is the filter I'm gonna, I'm gonna build up. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's a uh, five, um, order five uh, Chebyshev filter, low pass with a cutoff frequency at eight megahertz. And because I've picked the uh, standard values here, it comes out as some nice round values in the, uh, uh, for the caps here. Uh, now the caps are easy, I've got those, uh, they're easy to obtain. For the inductors, they're both 1.3 microhenries, and uh, that would be uh, implemented by two T37-6s with uh, 21 turns. So I've showed you this site before, this is toroids.info. And this is how you can uh, basically derive, you input the, uh, the inductance that you want and it tells you the turns that you need to do. So obviously I can't do 20.8 turns, so I'll be doing 21 turns for that. So I'll build that up on a little, uh, a little piece of PCB and uh, we'll come back and do some more measurements. And here's the Frankenstein device itself here. So the uh, amplifier is pretty much unchanged. But I'm tapping the output here, here's the output and ground signal, and then I'm going off to this low pass filter here with the values uh, as per the design in the, in the previous section. So I've got a couple of switches here, um, I could have probably designed this better, but uh, basically these two switches, if they're in both in this position, then that leaves the low pass filter out of the circuit completely. And then if I switch them both this way, bear with, then that includes the low pass filter in the circuit. So what I'll do now is uh, we'll see the difference uh, in the output signals uh, by uh, turning the low pass filter in and out of the circuit. Okay, so I'm ready to test. And again, I've got four volts peak to peak on the input at seven megahertz. And gonna, you're gonna see it first without the low pass filter in. So there's that uh, distorted uh, wave there. Uh, Pretty, getting pretty close to a square wave. Let me put the low pass filter in there, see what we see. And as you can see, that immediately turns to a more typical uh, sine wave there. So uh, 
as you can see that's at uh, 7 megahertz and we're looking at approximately a 45.6 volts peak to peak signal so let's swap it back to the uh, um, without the low pass filter and you can see there it's still around about uh, 45 volts peak to peak on the uh, on the input but a vastly different signal so just to see some more visual representation of, of what happens when you vary the input voltage uh, I've created a, a graph here in uh, you know using Python that basically shows for uh, varying the input voltage so from 3 volts 4 volts 5 volts 6 volts at 12.9 volts of supply voltage you can see the different graphs so you can see here's the 3 volt graph here starts out looking so I guess relatively sinusoidal all the way up to the 6 volts on input here and you can see that's really starting to turn into a square wave looking signal. So for those who are interested, uh, basically uh, I got this data by using the uh, save as feature on, uh, on one of my signal and scopes. And I know the Rigol scopes have the, have the same feature. So you put, just put a USB stick in there, uh, you press save. Uh, the actual file itself is, uh, is CSV, CSV based, although you can choose some other formats out of the scope. You can choose XML as a binary format and so on and so forth. So it's kind of interesting to see that uh, kind of visual representation. Uh, what I could also do on here is now that I've got the data into Python, I could actually do some uh, uh, kind of Fourier transforms on it and see what uh, frequency components are in there. Now, I do have an FFT function in the, in the oscilloscope, but uh, it's nice to have some additional tools at your disposal. And just as a final note on the graphing side of things, so here's those uh, traces again. This time, so varying the input voltage again, 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts, and 6 volts, but this time with the low-pass filter in, in place. So you can see that the peak-to-peak -peak voltage isn't much different, uh, low-pass filter in or out, but obviously the, uh, the structure of the output waves is, is dramatically different. You can see this is a kind of a true sinusoidal wave in the uh, in the output with a low pass filter there as opposed to that square wave that we uh, that we saw before so the final uh, thing that I'd like to uh, sort of play around with on this circuit is to increase the uh, DC bias voltage on both of these BS 170s in the first stage and the easiest way that I know of doing that is basically replacing this diode right here with short circuit so this diode uh, right now um, provides a 0.7 volt drop to the to the uh, bias that's set on the on the BS 170s. So currently that's around about 2.7 volts DC bias. If I get rid of the diode, that sh should go up to around about 3.4 volts. And I then do some remeasurements and uh, and see how that affects the circuit. So just to see this on the on the schematic. So here's the relevant section right here. I'll take this uh, diode out of the circuit, replace it with a, a simple short circuit, and that should raise the uh, DC bias on these two BS170s right, right here. So, uh, so I'll go ahead and make that change, and then we'll do some more measurements and see, see what happened. Okay, so here's the, uh, the kind of final step. So as I've... As I mentioned before, I replaced that diode with uh, with just a, a simple straight through connection. So that should increase the uh, the gate DC bias on those BS 170s by about 0.7 of a volt. So let's just confirm that. Let me uh, turn the um, get the uh, probe in the right spot. Got to be careful. Turn it on, and then you can see 3.4 volts, which is uh, pretty much. 0.7 volts higher than, than before. So let's see the uh, output on the oscilloscope varying the voltage, uh, the input voltage from 2 volts up to 4 volts and uh, we'll see what we see. Okay, so we're now ready to have a look at the output waveform signals after making that change to the DC bias of the BS170s. So I'm starting with a 2 volt peak to peak signal on the input and if we have a look at the output there, that's a 46.6 uh, volt peak to peak uh, output. And if we compare that to what, what we got before, uh, before was 26.4 volts peak to peak on the output. So getting a lot more output, but uh, unfortunately we are also getting a little bit more distortion. So let's see that again. There's 2 volts peak to peak on the input going up to 3 volts, 4 volts, and 5 volts. 
So you can see there's significantly more distortion there on the, on the output. And one of the other things to notice here is, if you have a look, we've got some instability in the output too. So if I, if I turn that on, you can see that output sh signal is actually shrinking over time uh, because I'm driving those BS170 so much heavier. Okay, so I've got the, uh, those, the two graphs, uh, uh, top and bottom here. So this top graph is with the, uh, the modification increasing the bias on the, uh, the BS170s to around about 3.4 volts. And this was the original set of traces. And again, uh, the traces are with 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts, and 6 volts on the input. So you can see the dramatic difference between kind of the normal configuration and with, the, with those uh, BS170s more highly biased. This is obviously incredibly distorted up here. Uh, now we're getting a huge difference in the peak-to-peak peak signals here. You can see this is up to 60 volts here. This is only up to 30 volts here. Uh, well, it's really uh, 60 volts peak to peak here, and, and here it's actually 120 volts peak to, hit to peak, from this peak to this peak. But uh, obviously you can see here there's a, an incredible amount of distortion uh, included there. So anyway, this kind of wraps up uh, what, I'd, uh, what I wanted to sort of experiment with in the, uh, in the amplifier. Um, again, this is, all, this is all a bit of fun. Now obviously uh, this shows it's not recommended to, uh, to increase the... Uh, the bias on those BS one seventies. Uh, all you'll get is more distortion in the signal rather than uh, rather than more output in the signal. Um, so anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, it's a wrap for now.